Many people are gripped and even managed by their fear. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of rejection, fear of losing control. Fear is a gripping force for many. Yet when we seek the Lord, he delivers us from fear. This is a quote coming to you from Pastor Dave Whitehead. Now before getting into this broadcast, I would like to share a few thoughts with you on fear. First of all, fear is one of the enemy's most powerful weapons that he uses against us. And fear looks for a channel, a pathway, an access, an avenue into your heart. And oftentimes that channel is other people's words. So be aware of this. Recognize the enemy's tactics here. He will use other people's words to try to get fear into your heart. In this broadcast, we are continuing the theme of resolutions in our new series entitled, In the Beginning Was the Word. In this particular broadcast, we will once again cover the subject of seeking the Lord as we deal with resolution number 16 as found in Psalm 34 4 which says I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears now before uh, getting into the actual text this will be the main text but before looking at that we want to I uh, ask ourselves some questions. What caused David to write these words? What, what situation was he facing? What kind of circumstances were coming again uh, his way? Uh, why would he have fears? What was the cause of his fears? And so we're going to look at 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 12, and that will give us answers to our questions. In 1 Samuel 21, 10 through 12, this is what it says. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. And David laid up these words in his heart, and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So we see the situation at hand. David is fleeing from Saul. Saul's rage at this time is so great, so implacable, and his power is so great and his diligence in chasing down David. And here's David in the utmost distress because he finds himself in a situation where he cannot go and flee to the neighboring nations because they're all at peace with Saul and they would deliver him up to Saul in a, in a minute. So he's thinking, where do I run? Where do I go? And so he runs to the worst place on the planet. He runs to the country of the Philistines. But not only did he go to the country of the Philistines, but he went to the very city of Goliath, whom he had slain, and whose sword he was now wearing. And here we find, in verse 11, we find David in the midst of Achish, king of Gath, and the servants of Achish. And these servants are saying to the king, Is not this David the king of the land? And notice how they call him David the king. Now what they were referring to there is, they understood that David was anointed by Samuel 
to succeed Saul. They knew that he was the king elect, the person designed to be the next king. But notice they just didn't say David the king. They said, is not this David the king of the land? And what they were saying, there is the king of this land, which belongs to him for his conquest of Goliath. Because whoever was conqueror on that day would possess the kingdom. Well, we know that David was the conqueror over Goliath. So therefore, he's the possessor of the kingdom of Gath, of the Philistines land. So they're saying, is not this David the king of the land, the king of this land? And verse 12 tells us, David heard these words, he laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid. He heard these words, he pondered them, he thought them over in his mind. He, these words produced fear in his heart. They were the access into his heart to produce fear in his heart. David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid. We see this also played out in Psalm 55, 3 to 5. Listen to what it says. David saying, because of the voice of the enemy, my heart is sore pains within me, and the terrors of death are fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me. Horror has overwhelmed me. Now notice what he said here, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the words of the enemy. Look at the result. My heart is sore pained. I'm in deep distress and anguish. I'm afraid for my life. Fearfulness is, has so gripped my heart that it's causing my body to tremble. And horror has overwhelmed me. It's covering me like a blanket because of the voice of the enemy, the words of the enemy, fear has gotten into my heart. David laid up the words of the servants of the king of Gath in his heart and was sore afraid. Fear looks for an, an avenue, an access into the heart. And that access, that avenue is through words, fear producing words. But you know, David, this example of David is not the only example in the Bible. Let's look at some other examples of how fear came into the heart through words. We'll look at Genesis 32, 6 to 7 and verse 11. What we have here is that Jacob is returning back to his brother Esau. Now this is after 20 years of separation. Uh, what happened was Jacob stole the birthright, stole the blessing from his brother Esau, and then he fled to his mother's brother's house, Laban's household. He stayed there for 20 years. Now he's returning back to Esau. He has no idea what to expect from Esau. And so he sent messengers ahead to find out how Esau would react. The messengers returned to Jacob saying, We came to your brother Esau, and also he cometh to meet thee, and four hundred men with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Now it would have been okay if the messenger said to Jacob, we came to your brother and he's coming to meet you. But no, they added, and 400 men with him. What's up with the 400 men? And when Jacob heard this, he was greatly afraid and distressed. Words produced fear in his heart. Then we go over to 1 Samuel 17, verses 10 through 11. Here is the account of Goliath, this 12-foot uh, giant of a man, 
standing before the Israelite army and he's challenging them. He's saying, am not I a Philistine and ye servants to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And then he went on to say, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Once again, we see how words were the avenue of fear getting into the heart. Then we go over to 1 Kings chapter 19, 1 to 2, verses 1 to 2. Now, this is uh, following the account of Elijah calling down fire from heaven, God brought fire upon the altar. And verse 1 says, And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and withal how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, so let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. When Elijah heard Jezebel's words, she said, Buddy, you are but a dead man. I'm going to kill you for what you did to my prophets. When he heard her words, the Bible tells us that he went for his life. He ran for his life. Fear gripped his heart because of those words. Now, we also want to look at 1 Samuel 4, verses 5 through 8. And this kind of gives you... Uh, an indication how fear rides on words only this time it's not the enemy bringing fear on the people of God but the people of God bringing fear on their enemies through their words listen to this account and when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp, and the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God is come into the camp. Now I understand at this time Israel was not right with God. But I want you to notice the principle that we're talking about, how fear rides on words. Here, this time, Israel shouted with a great shout. And when those Philistines heard that shout, they heard them shouting the praises of God, the words of the shout that says that they were afraid. Because they said, God is come into the camp. Oh, hallelujah. This is not only can the enemy bring fear into your heart through words, but you can bring fear into the hearts of your enemies through your words, through shouting the praises of your God. Oh, hallelujah. Now we get to our main text which is Psalm 34, verse 4. Here David said, I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Now remember, the situation he was facing was that he heard the words of the servants of Achish, king of Gath. He heard those words, and he became so afraid. So what did he do? He ran to the Lord in his great distress. 
He cried out to God. He didn't confide in his own wisdom or trust to any devices of his own. But he entreated God's favor. He begged for his help. He left his case with him. And what did the Bible say? God heard him. He answered him immediately and delivered David from all his fears. He rescued him from all the things which he feared. He made a perfect work of it. God cleared away not only his fears, but the cause of the fears. Listen to what the family Bible note says. Jehovah can deliver his people not only from evil, but also from the fear of it, so that in seeking him, they shall not want any good. Many are the fears of God's people from within and without. And by reason of sin, Satan and the world that we live in. But the Lord we see here, he saves his people out of the hands of their enemies. He grants them his presence and scatters all their fears. Oh, listen to what this message is telling you today. The enemy is looking for an inroad into your heart. And the way he does that is through words. Fear producing words. If you have taken fear into your heart through someone else's words, the Holy Spirit is saying to you today, Seek the Lord. Run to him, and he will, just like he did for David, he will deliver you from all your fears. It's time that you put fear where it belongs, in the heart of your enemies. And the way to do that is, like the Israelites, by shouting the praises of your God. Because the Bible tells us God inhabits the praises of his people. And when you shout, when you put forth the praise, Jesus will show up and show off his power on your behalf and bring fear into the hearts of your enemies. Give the devil a reason to be terrorized today. It's either you or him. Before he gets a chance to put fear in your heart through words, get fear in his heart through your shout of praise to Jesus. Our time is up for today's broadcast, but I encourage you, stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of resolutions as found in the book of Psalms. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that through God's word in this message, you will be delivered from all your fears. In Jesus' name, amen.